The Notify module has had a number of feature increases and enhancements in IGSS 11, all of which have been backported to IGSS 10. So this video can also be used as an introduction to new Notify features for IGSS, IGSS 10 as well. The Notify configuration I'm using is slightly modified from the demo configuration. This is in order to illustrate the newer functionality in IGSS 11 and IGSS 10. You can set up the Notify module to forward unacknowledged SMS alarms to backup operators. This mirrors standard Notify functionality with regards to forwarding unacknowledged alarms that originate from IGSS. You can also set up Notifier to send or resend all active or unacknowledged alarms to operators when the duty shift starts. This also includes when duty shift is started due to calendar activation. If you are also using email messages for alarm notification, you can now define SMTP email server credentials. Defining the sender SMTP server name, the SMTP server user and password, as well as the sender email address. Remember to select the SSL connection checkbox if your ISP requires SSL communication. If you have set up a backup notifier server, you can also send a message to all primary operators on duty if and when the backup notifier server starts. All primary operators will also receive a message when the backup notifier server stops and the primary server resumes alarm processing. You can also force a, the backup notifier server to start alarm processing if a modem error is detected on the primary notifier server by enabling this option here. Speaking of backups, a copy of the notifier configuration, the .ams file, is now saved in the 7T backup folder whenever you save the notifier con con configuration normally. This makes it easier to include your notifier configuration when sending a copy of your configuration to our product support. When setting up the parameters for remote control of IGSS objects, you can define who may initiate the, ca the command in the remote control tab. Here I have created the stop command for the P1 object in the IGSS demo configuration, defining the message text, the server, and the object, as well as the atom to be, to be started. I can define which notifier operator types are permitted to start the command, and you can see the access can be granted based on operator roles, such as the primary backup reference or supervisor, operator availability, or by individual operators. The notify module will only accept sent commands from operators who are permitted to initiate commands on these objects. A new feature in IGSS 11 is the option to register a notify operator is, is available for duty planning. When selecting operators for duty plans, only operators that are available for duty planning will be displayed. Operators already assigned to duty plans will not be removed if they are no longer available for duty planning. You must remove the operator by reassigning another operator to the duty plan instead. You can do this in the calendars form. Remember, first to select the calendar and then click Change Operators. Select which operator you want to reassign and then select the replacement operator. All duties which the operator has in the calendar will be replaced with the new operator. If the operator has duties on other calendars, you must run through all calendars manually, replacing the operator with another. You can create a new calendar as a copy of an existing calendar, including all duty plans, assigned operators, and filters. In the Configuration tab on the Calendars form, you can select a calendar. Here, the Normal Calendar. Then, click the Copy button. The Normal Calendar and all its duty plans are copied here. And you should probably rename the calendar. The new Normal Calendar and duty plans can already be seen here, in the Duty Planner tab. All duty plans and operators are copied, and you can edit the duty plans and replace operators as described previously. You can define holidays for your notifier configuration. 
defining the date and holiday name, and also setting whether or not the holiday is a recurring holiday, meaning the holiday occurs every year at the same defined date. Each holiday must be created individually, and all created holidays are directly accessible in the duty plan. You can name the holiday in the calendar by selecting the Display in Calendar checkbox. Let me create some, some holidays here. This allows you to create special duty plans that include holidays and weekends, for example the Holiday Operations Duty Plan, which is a recurring duty plan that is set up for holidays only. Here I have created a special holiday calendar which contains the Holiday Operations Duty Plan, which allows a user to activate the holiday calendar either manually or with an SMS message, or potentially through an object in the, in the supervised module. You can broadcast a message to all selected operators, either as an SMS message or as an email message. This is much like the broadcast functionality in the supervised module. You can select which notifier operators are to receive the message. If you are creating an SMS message, you are restricted by the normal number of characters in an SMS message, for instance about, the, about 160 characters. Once you have typed the, the, the message, click the send button to send it. Sending an SMS message to many recipients will reserve modem capacity during broadcast, pausing normal alarm forwarding until modem capacity is freed. A number of new special objects have been introduced for integration between the Notify module and the Supervise module. All of these notifier objects, as we call them, are meant to display notifier data in the supervised module and, in some cases, also allow an, an IGSS operator to activate or deactivate notifier calendars directly from the supervised module. Here are examples of the notifier objects. The notifier error object displays the status of the GSM modem attached to the notifier module. Since I do not have a GSM installed on my demonstration machine, this object will always display the GSM modem to be off. The Notifier Active object is a digital object which can display the status of the Notifier module. There are four possible status levels. 0. The Notifier module is stopped. 1. The Notifier module is started. 2. The Notify module is started but will not forward alarms or send messages because the Notify module is registered on another IGSS server, running or sec primary or secondary, and is active. 3. The Notify module is started but cannot or will not forward alarms. This status occurs when the Notify module is broadcasting many messages to operators, using the modem's resources, or when a pause SMS message has been received from an operator. 
In this case, the Notify module is not running. If I start the Notify module, the status is updated. Note that the Notifier active object is a digital object, and if you want to display names instead of the state number, or if you want more than two states, 0 and 1, accessible, you must create a digital object template first, and then create the Notifier active object from that template. You are not required to use a digital object template though, and a standard two-state digital object can easily be used for the Notifier active object, although of course you will only have access to the states 0 and 1. Additionally, you can create notify, a Notify Calendar Information object which displays the number and names of Notify operators on duty. There are basically two types of Notify Calendar Information objects. The Notify Count objects display the number of Notify objects presently on duty, which means Notify operators assigned for duties on active calendars. The Notify Names objects display the names of the operator do, operators presently on duty. Note that each object here is aligned towards one calendar. Finally, we have the main calendar, which collects data from all the other calendars as a sort of aggregate. Finally, you can create a digital object which can activate calendars in the Notify module. This requires some fairly meticulous setup, but you can tie the calendar object to a PLC or have an operator change the state of the object and thereby activate or deactivate the calendars in the supervised module. For instance, like this. This will actually take some time before it is registered in the Notify module because the Notify module will scan the IGSS objects once every 60 seconds regardless of the scan interval set up uh, for, the, for, the, for the supervised module. So this update might take a while. The calendar information objects are now updated and you can see the number and names of Notify operators uh, of the active calendars. As a side note, if you want to use an object to activate and deactivate calendars from the supervised module, you must select the Use IGSS to Control Active Calendars checkbox in the Calendars form. Once you have done this, it will no longer be possible to activate calendars from Notifier. All calendar activation must be conducted through the object on the supervised module, or through a PLC if the object is mapped to a PLC. If you still want to activate calendars from Notifier as well as the supervised module, you can select the Send Active Calendars to IGSS checkbox. This will allow a Notifier operator to activate calendars in the Notifier module while still allowing an IGSS operator to activate calendars in the supervised module. What happens is that the Notifier module will send a command to the digital object controlling calendar activation in the supervised module. The object will then change state and the calendar is set up to be activated for that object state will then be activated, deactivated or ignored. The calendar activation table is set up here where you must define which calendars are activated, deactivated or ignored for each state of the controlling object.